Hi everybody, Diana here at So In Common, home of the Build a Quilt System. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so glad to have you all join us for this video. This week we are talking about our Quilt Lab Quilts in Translation series and the Feathered Star. What's Quilts in Translation? What's Build a Quilt? Well, stay tuned because I'm going to let you know. Build a Quilt is my um, design system for creating your quilt blocks in the hoop of your embroidery machine. Now I have tons of how-to videos here on YouTube to show you how that works and when you buy our system you get a how-to video from soup to nuts on the whole thing. However, um, what a lot of you has have asked me is with this system how do I translate some traditional blocks into this system if there's not like a flying geese block or something like that. We're going to talk about that today in this um, little demonstration because today we are doing, like I said, the feathered star or what I would call the most basic feathered star because feathered star blocks, you can make a feathered star block that ends up being an entire quilt. They can be quite large, quite feathered, but we're going to talk about just the basic one today. We're also, I have a little video portion that I'm going to share with you on how I chose my fabrics. A lot of the questions that I get from you guys is, what do I pick colors? How do I pick fabrics? Well, we're, I thought might help if you guys saw me do that for this particular block, because to be honest, I've chosen some colors that I bet a lot of you would go, hmm, I would not put those together, but I did. So I'm going to show you how I did that in that little film clip. And then at the end, we'll come back and I'll share with you how you can get your Build-A-Quilt system. And it's still on the introductory price for another couple of weeks. Gosh, I have a big thumbprint right in the middle of my glasses. Uh, maybe it's going to go away. I don't know. That's a little bit better. <laughs> um, so I will come back at the end and I'll share that with you. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over to our um, other camera. And there we go. All right, so build a quilt. What is it? Build a quilt is piecing your blocks in the hoop. And in your basic block set one, you get the three what i consider after 55 plus years of quilting the three most often used block segments for quilts the half square triangle the quarter square triangle and the regular old square and there's a reason for this square that's because when you go to make larger blocks say 12 inch 15 inch 16 inch 24 inch blocks this gives you all of your guidelines for sewing those together on your sewing machine okay so that's why the solid block because when you do every single piece segment on your machine then you are going to get the perfect block every time or the most accurate block every time i don't like the word perfect because i don't feel like anything is really perfect but you'll get the most accurate block every time um, and so I gave you that solid block. I feel like it's really important. And um, you'll see me using it in other videos as well. Um, all you need for this system is a five by seven. Now you could do a four by four hoop, but you um, this block comes in two, three, four, and five inch finished. You get all four sizes of each one of these. And they all fit in a five by seven, but the two smaller ones will fit a four by four. So if you want to get it, you want to give it a try, you can do that. A lot of blocks use those size pieces. So it's a it's a good way to start. And if you start doing your quilts that way, you're going to want a bigger machine eventually. I always said, no, I'll never do it. I'll never do it. And I promised my husband I would not take out loans or anything to do my machines. So I started saving my money and my pennies. Gosh, I was the biggest penny pincher in the world to get my next biggest machine. <laughs> so, um, but so you can use for the two smallest sizes the four by four. But the system, if you have a five by seven hoop or larger, you can do all four sizes of your um, segments. And we call these segments because they will come together to make one big block. Okay, so that's what build a quilt is. And today 
we are talking about translating this little block here, which is called a feathered star. Now, a feathered star, this is, like I said earlier, the most basic. It can get huge and big where these feathers, that's what we're calling our feathers, can start going out here in this direction. And then they'll start building out here in this direction. Again, I mean, Google or use whatever um, uh, search service you use to Google feathered star or to look up feathered star because there are tons and tons of versions of the feathered star, really beautiful. But I wanted to talk about this one today because I wanted to, to talk about how, what we would use in the build a quilt system to make this because have you noticed something? This piece right here, 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 and here are not half square triangles, they're flying geese. Now I will tell you, flying geese are coming in our next basic set because they are uh, one of the most often used as well. So these are coming, but if you have a smaller machine or you wanna get started or you don't care about whether it's a flying geese or two half square triangles, I wanna show you how you can take the system as it is now, the very basic one system, and make it, make this block. So let's just look at it for a moment. We can see we have four blocks, four squares. Cool. We've got squares in the system, no problem. We can see that we've got, oh, actually we've got five squares because we have one of a separate color. And this is what I do when I'm doing line. I will take um, a little pad and a pen and I will write it down. So I notice I have two colors here, right? So I say color A and color B. Okay. So I've got that written down. Now I know we're gonna call this color A and we're gonna call this color B. Look around so you can read it. There you go. So color A and color B. Now we're going to count one, two, three, four squares color A. So four squares of color A. So I'm in my color A. So four squares. And I know that I'm going to use my four inch finish for this, for the squares. So I'm going to say four inch. That's the one I'm going to choose to use. Then I'm going to say one square color B or in finish. Okay, now my squares are done. Now let's look. Oh, I've got half square triangles. Well, I know I have those in my system. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight half square triangles. So we know that when we make half square triangles, every single square gives two half square triangles because we cut them on the diagonal and we get two. So if I have eight half square triangles, I am going to need four color A's for HSP because that's going to give me eight. And if you help me to remember, write a little eight in parenthesis. I'm going to show you this in a sec. And these now are not four inch finish, right? See, that is smaller than that. It's about a fourth of this size. So that is a two inch finish. So I'm going to write here two inch finish, okay? And then I know I'll need four HSPs or half square triangles to make eight and it's finished by color B. All right, so now I know, I've got written it out, I've decided color A, color B, I've decided my squares and my half square triangles. Okay, now here's where we run into a little bit of concern with this block because one, two, three, four, we have four quarter square, not quarter square, sorry, four flying geese. Well, we don't have flying geese in this in this basic block set one. It is coming, but it's not in this one. So if I take my ruler and I line it up on this line, this line down here, and I draw a line from here to here and here to here, 
what have I just created? Two more, or four more technically, half square triangles. And then if I turn it this way, put it on that line, and draw my line here, and my line there. I've created now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more half square triangles. So what does that mean? That means I need to come over here and change this to, I need eight of these to give me a total of 16 half square triangles because I have four, eight, 12, 16 in total now, right? So we're gonna put 16 in here. So I need my color A, four squares of color A, eight squares of color A for half square triangles. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I need 12 squares, but these guys are two inch finish and this is four inch finish. So make sure you look there. And the same down here, I've got 12 squares that I need, but some of them are four inch finish, some of them are two inch finish, okay? And then that is going to be what I take over to my cutting table, because now I can go pick my fabrics and I can cut my squares and prep my fabrics for making this. So while we have this here, while we have this here, let's talk about how we would end up sewing this block together once, once we have everything pieced. So we're gonna piece, I always piece the easiest stuff first, that's definitely the squares, or when I have the least amount of time and I'm like zip, zip, zoom, Diana, let's get it done. I'll piece these because they're quick, super quick and easy. And these are four inch finish. So if you have a larger hoop, you might even be able to get all four or five of them done in one big hoop if you have a bigger hoop. But you can at least do, um, in, if you have your four by four, you might be able to get a four inch finish in there. It might fit. But you can at least get one of each in there in your five by seven, right? So um, I would just piece those quick. And then I know I have six half square triangles and they're all pieced exactly the same because what changes these is how I flip them. So in these two, my light is at the top, my dark is at the bottom. But in these two, my dark is at the top and my light is at the bottom. That is what creates that little feather. So yes, it could be done with a, with a flying piece, but since we don't have them quite yet in the system, we can substitute or translate that flying geese into two half square triangles. So how I would sew these together, once I've pieced everything, everything's pieced, I've got it laid out. What I would do first is I would sew my feather sections together. I would sew these two together, and then these two together, and then these two halves together. And I would repeat that four times. And then what I would do is I would lay everything out so that it looks like this. Then I would start at my top. I would sew this to this and this to this. Then I would sew this to this and this to this, this to this, this to this, the same way. So I'm doing them in rows. And then I'm going to sew my top row to my center and then my bottom row to my center. And then I would be done with piecing those, or with sewing and piecing those together. And then my block is done. Now, um, I will um, uh, attach my video on using um, wash away stabilizer to the end of this video to show you how I would then um, wash away my stabilizer at the end. So at the end, you're only dealing with your fabric. You're not having to worry about having the bulk of your stabilizer in there, okay? So I will link that video. And if you haven't tried that yet, or you're new to this process, go ahead and give that a try. So that is how we would translate the feathered star. And this would end up being eight, well, uh, let's see, four, eight, 12. So this is gonna end up being a 12 inch block. And what I do on this is I don't necessarily write it on here because I can use this 
for other sizing, but I would go ahead and write it here. So this is for a 12 inch feathered star. And when I'm done with these, since I already have it all figured out, I take it and I put it on the back of my shirt and then I slip this into a little plastic holder. That way I don't have to do this each and every time. I know this is a feathered star. Now what I could do here is say feathered star. So I know what block it is, but I keep my little guides that I create on the back so that whenever I wanna make this, I've got this printed out. Doesn't matter what colors are here. In fact, you could print this out in black and white. It would be fine. And usually I do, but I wanted you to see it in this color because these are kind of the colors that I translated it into fabric. And the next section of our video, I am going to show you how we picked out the fabric. And I think you will enjoy that. So let's go ahead now and go over to our other camera and look at how we chose fabric for the feathered star. Okay, everybody, here we are at the cutting table and I have my little printout of my feathered star. Now you can see it got cut off on the sides because I just used a regular size paper and I didn't size my block down because I wanted to be able to see as much of the color as possible. And I've been thinking, so it's the first part of September. We're going to be transitioning from that summer to that fall, but I'm not ready to start putting out quilts and stuff that say fall, fall, dark browns, rusts, beautiful golds, beautiful deep emerald greens. I'm not ready for that yet. That comes like mid-October for me or early October. There's that time between now at the end of August, early September through September, where I like something more of a transition in the household, right? I don't like that stark summer, beautiful, bright and bold to fall warm and cozy. Not quite yet. So I chose these colors because this is kind of a sandy color. Um, perfect to still think about, of course, the beautiful beaches of summer. And this is that minty green color, that or minty aqua that I love so much. Um, and I thought, what about those two together? Because it gives kind of a mid-range in the color, a little bit more muted than if they were bright summer, but not completely fall yet, right? Not completely warm and cozy yet. There's still a little bit of vibrance, but it's just like, do you know what I mean when I say the sun starts to turn and everything gets that softer glow from the sun about this time of year? It's not that super bright sunshine of June and July, but it's not the cooler sunshine of October, November yet. So that's what these colors remind me of. So I went into the fabric stash and the first thing I noticed um, in my fabric rolls was this one. Let's, let's just undo it is this one. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's that all over, right? And what I like about this is that it's light, it's medium, it's dark, so it really gives something that reads as solid a very um, um, textured appearance. So I love this. And let me tell you, I know I still have the info here. It's Riley Blake. It's pattern CR480. It's a Crayola Kaleidoscope color. Gosh, we've got kaleidoscopes on the brain these days, don't we? <laughs> I'm funny that I picked that after just doing the kaleidoscope quilt, which I'm still working on the quilting. I've redesigned the quilting, but I'm still picking out that stuff from last time. So um, it'll be done here pretty quick, but I'm still working on that. Um, but this, I don't know if it's still available, but you have the information, you can look for it. Check with your local fabric shops, check with any of the online fabric retailers, you might be able to find it. I think I still have one or two yards of it, and I really love it. And that, to me, this is definitely going to be this color. No no doubt about it. So then I went and I pulled this color, or this fabric. This is another one of those Lori Holt B Cross Stitch fabrics, and I love it. It's more in that minty color range. And it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good idea for that color, right? It's, it's, 
it's pretty much right on. And it looks good with this, but let's talk about it for a moment. I think because this is very into the, like the yellow undertones, and this very definitely has that white cross stitch in it. I think there's a little bit of a clash there, and I think if I used it on here, even though they're both prints that read as solid, I think that if I use that in here with this fabric, it's going to blend so much that you're not going to see the feathers in the center. I think that's the problem we're going to have there, although they do make a good combo. So let's set that one aside for a moment. Then I chose, this is a Tula pink. Now, I, you know I love Tula. Do I have the info on this one? Let's see. Oh, I do. Okay, so this is, of course, Tula Free Spirit Moon Garden. Um, oh, I don't have the little die lot number. It's not. Oh, wait, maybe. Let's see. Is it on any? Oh, nope. It's not on here, but I love it. It's a very geometric, and it's got all her bright little colors. And I thought, well, maybe those bright little colors would add a little zazz, zazz, zing to this. And when I look at them together, I think, yes, this kind of mid-tone aqua would be. And I'm not, I'm kind of okay with the dark, too, with this. But the dark is, is too dark, right? It's too dark. That mid-tone would be okay, but here's what's throwing my eye. It's all of Tula's other beautiful colors in here. I just, if it were only those yellows and oranges, I think I could get away with it. But because we also have the purples and the pinks, I just am not wild about those two together. I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm wild about the fabric. I'm just not wild about the two of them together. So we're going to put that in a definite no pile. Then I got that. I just picked some solids out. If I did that, this would look like mud to me. This is a very muddy kind of olive, almost army green, which is a great color in and of itself. But this is what I use when I want to move more into those fall colors. So for me, that's, although they kind of go fine together, it's, it's not giving me the same feeling, the same transitional feeling. This moves me straight into autumn. So we're going to say no on that one. And then I chose this one. Oh, no. This is very bright, still very summer, and it kind of very blue in the overtones not happening with this. So that's a definite no. Then I chose this one. Oh my goodness. Because that blue and camel or blue and sand go beautifully together. That's a gorgeous contrast. There's plenty of contrast there. Dark to a medium-ish light. Great contrast. But that is very obviously not what I'm going for, right? Just that's not it. So I could have said yes to this and just changed my color scheme, but I wanted to give it one more try. So I chose, I also looked at that one, very much too much of a blend. That was a no. Then I saw that one. Mm -hmm -hmm. This is dark enough, but it's still kind of in a mid-tone range to blend beautifully with that. We're going to get contrast here, which is what we want, right? We want some contrast. We don't want it just to look like a mud ball or just two colors on top of each other. We want there to be some distinction there. So it's darker definitely than this. Now you're seeing it a little darker in this camera. When I see it with the naked eye, it's, it's a little closer than it looks here on camera, but it, this is definitely a bit darker. But this is still a mid-tone range. It's still a transitional range for me before I would go into the fall stuff. So this, that might be our one. Let's take our other one, that B cross stitch. Oh, so pretty together, but I just think they're going to blend too much and we're not gonna get, there's just not enough contrast in the values. So let's bring this one, and I believe that this, 
This is either a Tula solid or it's a Kimberbell solid. Please, I forgive me. I don't remember which. Um, but these two, I think that's going to be our combo. And indeed, it turns out, because you've already seen the finished block, this turns out to be our combo. So now I have my cut sheet for my half square triangles and my squares. I know those look like rectangles. They're really squares. Printing this out on regular notebook paper really stretched it and did some funny things to it. But now I've got my cut sheets over here and I'm gonna go in and figure out, I think I need, um, what did I write down? I needed eight of color A, four inch, plus four more four inch color A's for background in the squares. And so in total, I needed um, eight, for my half square triangles, eight color A four inch and eight color B four inch because they'll get made into two inch finished. So, but we'll talk more about that when we talk about the translation of the square over under the other camera. But that was the fabric journey to pick those out. Now let's go talk about translating this beautiful block into the Build-A-Quilt system. Okay, everybody, so I have cut out my fabric, the fabrics that we chose. I gave it a light press. Yeah, there's a little bit here, but that's gonna end up getting cut off, so I'm not worried about it. But I have my solid squares, and I have my triangles for my half square triangles, and I'm set to go. I have my um, hoop hooped with um, my wash away stabilizer, and I am using my favorite um, dove gray. I'm not piecing in the black today because we're not going to go through the whole piecing process. I've done that on a lot of videos and um, there's lots of that for you to check. And when you purchase your build a quilt system, um, there are videos, time stamped videos for to walk you through all of that. But I wanted to show you my setup. I have my tools set up here. I always have a tape handy. I always have a stiletto handy my glue stick, my favorite scissors, um, my seam roller, a pair of tweezers in case I have to um, grab, um, you know, something um, that's small. And I have one of these really expensive, inexpensive, sorry, inexpensive little pointers that you can get through Amazon. You get like four or five in a box for like six, eight bucks, something like that. Now, I know that our machines come with stylus, those plastic ones. I don't like them as much. I like these, and they're very soft touch on my screen. They don't mar the screen. I've seen screens get marred up by the hard plastic ones that come with them. So I like these. Like I said, you can get them in different colors and stuff. So check that out on Amazon. Just type in something like... Um, phone stylus or computer stylus, anything like that, and you should be able to find these. Alrighty, so now I'm ready to start um, doing my um, piecing, and I am starting with a square block. So I am going to stitch down my placement line and keep going from there. The next time you see the block, it will be complete. All right, darlings. I'm sorry. I just started talking in a British accent. Do you guys do that? I've been watching British TV or listening to it on the computer while I've been piecing and quilting, and it just came out. Hello, darlings. <laughs> so sorry. All right, guys. So here we are. I like darling better than I like guys. I, I don't like being called guy. I feel like I need to wear darker lipstick when that happens. Anyway, so here it is. Here's our feathered star. I love how it turned out. I love this color looks like the feather. This is a darker color than this, obviously, but it's good contrast. Now, it it isn't smooth yet because it's still got the um, stabilizer in it. I haven't washed it out yet. I will do that tomorrow. Um, sorry. Allergies are kicking in again, but I wanted you to see how it's finished. Now let's go over to the other camera and we'll um, finish up. Okay, everybody, what did you think about that? Did that help you figuring out the colors? Um, that's what I pretty much do anytime I sit down. And I know um, I'm just going to hold up the, the picture again. 
um because i actually have my block sitting over there um but th that's kind of what i do every single time um so i have lots of these in folders and the one thing i'm going to do a video, um, later this week to show you how i use my build a block printed instructions that might be helpful for you as well um, but i need to pick up a couple of things at um my local shop my local store not fabric store just my local um thrift store not thrift store discount store variety store grocery store that kind of thing the target let's just say it i can this is my channel i can tell you where i shop target i have to pick up a couple of things that i'll want to show you for that um so that little video is coming this week okay um but um that's pretty much what i do each and every time i don't typically print it out in color but you guys need to see that color um what i typically do is just print it out in grayscale, which is basically black and white right and then um i go over and start picking colors if i have thought about colors already I'll kind of mark them on here just to say, you know, I want an ivory and a lime green or pink or whatever. I'll kind of write that on there to give me an idea. Then I go over into the stash and I go over into my little cubes of rolled fabric, which I can see what I love about doing that rolled fabric is that I can see it right instantly what I've got there. Um, and I, I, oh, I didn't show you that today, but I will in the next video. I know I've done a little shorts video, which you could go back and look at. The shorts videos have lots of great tips and tricks in them. Um, but I will make sure to show you um, my little system of how I roll my fabric. Rolling helps keep it a little less wrinkled than when we fold, because fold, you're going to get wrinkles every time. And I'm sorry. I just having to press everything out first um so by rolling it you don't get the, the wrinkles you pack that way too rolling your clothes when you pack is like the best trick i ever learned for traveling is to roll my clothes and you could roll it with tissue paper in it that even works even better so i'll do i'll do a short course on that too you can kind of see um what i'm talking about there Fun little ideas always come into my mind um, for these things. So I'll show you that as well. Um, but back to choosing the fabric. I go over, I look. If I don't see anything, because what I keep in those little cubes is stuff that I know I'm into right now, I'm using right now. I've got a kind of plan in the back of my head for it right now. And if it's not, and it's in one of the I call them buckets, but they're those fabric Ikea boxes that fit into the Ikea shelves that I use. Um, I know like these three are my current Tula favorites, Tula pink favorites. This one and this one are my favorite Kimberbell. Kimberbell basics are one of my favorite fabrics. Um, I love them because they kind of, they go, it's like Tula, they all go together, but they mix and match with other um designer so well and then i'll have several buckets boxes where i have like all of my curated design sets i'm one of those people that hates to break up a curated set right at the beginning because they're meant to go together i want to do something with them together but then once i've used them or used a couple of them like i got a big fat quarter stack then what I do is then I break them all up and put them into colors. And my prints, my solids, I actually do keep solids separate, but all my then my prints go together. This is my blue prints. These are my pinks. These are my oranges. It's just easier. But I don't break up that curated set until I've at least done something with it. Even if it's just, even if I've only taken three or four fat quarters from it to make something, a topper or a pillow or a baby blanket or something like that, a baby quilt then i break up the curated set i don't know it's just the way my mind thinks how do you do yours do you break up your curated sets right away or do you keep them together throughout the whole time until they're down to like scrap value what do you do let us know in the comments because i really i'd like to know if other people do goofy things like i do or if you guys are really regimented like i think of myself as organized 
but my organization system might not be somebody else's organization system for sure. So um, I'll show you more of that in, in this next week or two, how I do that. But um, I hope that that fabric section helps some of you because the questions I get, and guys, please don't feel, I get so many emails from you and I love getting emails from you and you know that you can contact me at support at sewincommon.com anytime you want, uh, morning, noon, or night. I'm usually around. If I'm asleep, I'll get it the next morning and I'll answer it then. Sometimes if I look and I get them right before I go to sleep at night, because I'm kind of a, a, I go to sleep a little bit late. I will, I will come in here and I will write you right back. I don't like to sleep on it because I feel like wherever you are, you're waiting for that answer. So I'm pretty good about getting back to you guys pretty quickly. Um, but please don't be shy about asking your questions in the comments, because trust me, if one person has that question, a hundred people have that question. Truly, a hundred people will have that same question. So ask it in the comments or give your information in the comments because that's how we all inspire and share and grow as quilters, right? It is. All right, everybody. So now I have something. It's kind of weird. It's off the mark in regard to quilting, okay? I have been doing a studio... I wouldn't call it a reorganization. I would call it a clear out for sure, because I am trying in the next couple of months to rip up all the old nasty carpet in this studio and put in a nice laminate hardwood. And I'm not putting in true hardwood because this room just gets too much use. I wouldn't want to scratch it up, but I'm going to put in a good quality hardwood, laminate hardwood in here. So keep your fingers crossed, guys. I've been wanting to do this for 14 years and I have horrible allergies. So having to constantly literally rake this carpet clean is a nightmare for me. Um, but I've been going through all my stuff. Now, I love Kimber Bell. I'll just be honest. Kim Christofferson and her sister as well from my sister's quilt, uh, me and my girlfriend's quilt shop, Chris. I love them. They're dear, dear women. And I have been blessed to meet Kim. Um, but during COVID, the lockdown part of COVID, I went a little bit crazy on stocking up <laughs> for the long winter on my Kimberbell stuff. So this is not near what I have, but I've pulled out two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 rolls of Kimberbell felt. If you use Kimberbell, or if you're someone who likes really good quality felt for applique and stuff, there's 11 rolls here. They're, they're the, for whoever the first person is that comments, all you have to do is pay, I think it's $8 I checked for shipping. $8 in shipping and hand, handling, and I'll send you a, like a PayPal thing. This is not going in my shop or anything like that because I don't sell retail stuff like that in my shop. I only sell my own designs at this point. But the first person that says, I want them. I'm a Kimberbell lover. I can't live without Kimberbell felt. They're yours, but you need to pay the shipping, okay? That's Is that fair? Because you're getting 11 rolls. That's really good. Um, there's black. There's cream. I just dropped one. Um, there's that light blue. There's that kind of a tan color. Lots of the tan. There's the light pink. There's the dark pink. And there's that limey green color. So 11 of them are yours. The first person that comments and tells me how much they love Kimberbell. And then um, actually comment. but And I will say who it is. And then you'll need to send me your address and stuff at the email. So I can send you a PayPal receipt for the postage. Okay. Which is $8. That's all. $8. Mm -hmm. Um Anywhere in the United States, guys, I cannot ship overseas. Shipping that overseas would be like 
40, 50 bucks. I can't do it. I do apologize that I know that's a ridiculous amount for shipping, but so anyone in the U S okay. It tells me how much they love Kimberbell. I hope we, let's just, let's just be very good to one another. All right. I have more freebies. If you cover the postage kinds of things coming because I am really cleaning up this room and there will be a lot of Kimberbell stuff because I'm not kidding when I said I stocked up for the long winter. <laughs> I was so embarrassed when I go, I still have like a, a whole bucket of it over there, everywhere. My other side of the room is still, is wallpapered in Kimberbell basic fabric, the quilting backing fabric. That's, it's a little bit bigger print. It's the swirls. The doodles, it's the doodles. And it's in that lovely little color that I love so much. In fact, see that fabric right there? That's the fabric that that wall is done in. And you guys are going to see me over there, actually see me over there in videos coming um, until I get the room finished. I, I can't really film over there at the moment, but I will be filming. Some of my older videos I filmed over there before this room looked like I had a nuclear bomb go off in it. So 11 tell me be kind to one another if you don't get it or if you don't want to pay the postage then don't say anything but if you don't get it don't worry you guys know i love to share and i share stuff all the time so there will be more coming okay all right enough about that that was just something i wanted to um, talk to you about let me make one more announcement. Jennifer Alexander won our snowball topper. Jennifer, congratulations. I know I put up a post and all, but I wanted to say um, publicly, congratulations, Jennifer. She's going to be sending me photos of her finished piece in the next couple of weeks, and then I'll be sharing it all with you guys. So let's all give Jennifer a hand. I love it. And we'll have another, um, I don't know if we're having another contest coming up this year or not, because Starting in October, either the first or second week of October, we're going to be starting our quilt along for um, that uses our free blocks of the month from 2023. If you don't have your free blocks of the month yet, please go to the website and get them. I know a lot of you have been getting them because somebody the other day went through and <laughs> got every single one of them. Good for you. That's what they're there for. And those free blocks of the month this year were meant to get you guys going on this technique of piecing in the hoop. So, um, and the stuff you get in those have nothing to do with the build a quilt as far as the sizing and all, they're different. So, alrighty. So you might even have some extra sizes in there. That's kind of nice, right? So go to the website, get your free blocks of the month. This week, I put out a really short little video on making the candy cane stripe with the Build-A-Quilt system. Go check that out. It's a short little video, and it shows you how you can do candy canes. Um, and I give you some ideas for all the holidays, colors, and stuff like that. So go check that out as well. Um, again, welcome to all of our new subscribers, guys. We are this close. I mean, oops. This close, like this close to 10,000 subscribers, and we might do it by Monday morning. Fingers crossed, you guys. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you enjoy these videos, that you enjoy um, piecing in the hoop. We're just going to keep going. We've got lots of good stuff coming. Like I said, we still have the quilt along that's starting in October. So get your free block so you can take part in that. And um, we have lots of new stuff coming in the new year. Um, we've got more translation videos coming for you. We've got a new Build a Quilt Basics 2 coming still this year. Still this year. So lots of goodies. All right, everybody. Um, please subscribe to the channel. Click the notification so you can get notified when I put out content. And please like the videos that really helps us out so much with youtube and we appreciate it so much um, when you do like the video so thank you all so much and until next time have a great um uh labor day tomorrow um here in the u.s happy labor day to everyone and so life beautiful everybody bye for now